searching for a man. Why is it a man? And the fact that God is searching for a man is very, very essential, very, very, you know, it calls for, for attention. We need to wonder and ponder on why God is not searching for men. Why, why a man? And it is still a need of the moment. The search for a man continues. A man for Nigeria, a man for Enugu State, a man for Anambra, a man for Diocese of Nike, a man for St. Mark's Emily, a man for all of St. Cyprus Cathedral, a man for St. Peter's Nike, a man, uh, 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 what do you call it? Peter's a man for, for that particular church where you are coming from. God is still in search of a man. Everybody say a man. I wonder why not men. And when I looked at the Bible, I noticed that God is in this business of searching for men, and whenever and wherever He finds them, those, those, those such a man, such a man, does wonders and performs miracles. Let me take you through the Bible briefly. From Genesis, God sought for a man who will rebuild the ark, and He found no one. From the book of Nehemiah, he sought for a man through whom he will repair the broken walls of Jerusalem, and he found Nehemiah. From Esther, he sought for a man, and he found Mordecai and Esther. When God searches for a man, he's not searching just for, for a masculine, he's also searching for a feminine gender. Man is in generic sense. He found Mordecai, found Esther. From the book of 1 Samuel, God sought for a man when the tenor of the first king of Israel got expired and exhausted. And he found the young David in a bush. Not in an air conditioned house, not for the palace, but in a bush, in a thick forest. That's where God went and I identified a young man, a young, a, a, somebody who is still. Average at average age, not yet a mature man. God found him. That is why you don't see any man of God, any minister, say that this one is a small boy. God sought for a man when the tenor of the first king of Israel got and this man called Elijah in another passage of the Bible was described, or he is described as the holy man of God. There were so many prophets at his time, but scripturally, Elijah is the only one that, that stands described and identified as the only man of God. And one will begin to wonder, what will their others? If Elijah was the only holy man, what would be our others? From the book of Isaiah, he sought for a man to send, and a man who will go, and he found Isaiah. Isaiah didn't know where he was volunteering to go. All he knew, all, all, all he knew was that God was in search of a man, and he jumped up quickly, a man, and said, Here I am, send me. So we are. I don't know. All I know is that here I am saying. Some people in the course of one nation may be thinking that once they are ordained, they will be posted to some secret center. Or they will be posted to this place. I don't know if your church is very well. But you know those ones that are relatively in big churches. When you say here I am saying, you are simply indicating that you are ready to go anywhere. Anytime, without apologies or permission. Without problem. As I say, here I am saying, from Ezekiel, he sought for a man who will go to the valley of bones. Do you know that there are churches that are like the valley of bones? And somebody must go there. And, and Ezekiel volunteered, got to be to the grave. And he got there, and there were dry bones received life. And revival took place. 
I don't know where somebody will be sent to. God sought for a man who will go to Nineveh. He found Jonah, but Jonah unfortunately wanted to dodge and run away. Yet God continued, God was him. Caught him, got hold of him. Prepared a fish. In the course of his running away, he, he wanted to, to commit suicide by jumping into a river, in, into an ocean. He volunteered to be thrown into an ocean. He was thrown in there, the fish was there, carried him. His journey was made easy. Very simple, without any charge. Free of 